Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at reporting payroll taxes. In the prior session, we discussed payroll taxes such as federal payroll taxes, FICA Social Security, and FICA Medicare. We learn about how they determine how much money they take from your paycheck. In this session, we are, gonna, we are going to look at what does your employer do after they take the money. Well, after they take the money, they have to submit the money to the, to the government and they have to report that information. They use form called 941 and they have to submit your payment. How often, how and when? This is what we'll be discussing in this session. Before I start, I would like to remind you that if you are a CPA candidate or an accounting student, I strongly suggest you check out my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your, your CPA review course. I can be a useful addition to your CPA review course. I can explain the material differently and by doing so, adding 10 to 15 points to your knowledge, which in turn would help you pass the exam. Your risk to try me is one month. Your potential gain is passing the CPA exam. And if not for anything, take a look at my website to find out how well your university is doing for the exam. I do have resources for other courses as well. Please connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. Also, like this recording, share it. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Reddit, and Twitter. So. What are we discussing here? We are discussing the employer withhold payroll taxes. When they take that money from you, when they take that money from your paycheck, what do they do with it? When do they deposit it? And how to send it? How do they send it to the federal government? Well, we're going to try to answer these questions. Well, how do they send it? It's easy. They use something called EFTPS, Electronic Federal Tax Payment System is a free service provided by the Department of Treasury. Now you have to enroll in the system. By the way, I, I am I am an enrolled in the system. And when I was in practice, I used to use the system on a practically daily basis. Because if you work in a CPA firm, and some of you eventually would work in a CPA firm, a lot of companies, medium and large companies, what they do, they outsource, they outsource their payroll to their CPA firm. And the CPA firm will make all the payroll payments for them. Therefore, you'll have to enroll. And once you're ready, you make a payment. Once you click on make a payment, you tell them whether you are the company or an agent of the company. And it's just you follow the screen and you submit the payment and you have you have an identification number. It's pretty straightforward system, but it's a very valuable skill to have. So this is how they, de they deposit the payment. So when do they deposit the payment? There are many schedules, but we're going to be discussing first the most common. Employers typically deposit taxes either monthly or semi-weekly. So sometimes you have to do monthly, sometimes you have to do semi-weekly. What happens if you are a new employer? How would you know whether you are a semi-monthly or a se monthly or semi-weekly? You are assumed to be monthly scheduled depositor, except in unusual circumstances. Let's assume you have a lot of money withheld then it's unusual circumstances. There's called a look back period. The look back period is they look back at four quarters, then they determine whether you are monthly or semi-weekly. Okay, for example, for 2020, the 2020, the look back period runs from the quarters starting July 1st till June 30th. So simply put, from mid-2018 from mid to mid-2018. And here's what happened. If your payroll taxes during that period all, all your payroll taxes were less than 50,000, you are considered to be a monthly depositor. We'll talk about monthly depositor. Guess what? If they're more than, if they're, I'm sorry, if they're less than 50, you're a monthly depositor. If they're greater than 50, you become a semi-weekly scheduled depositor. Simply put, think about it. If you make, if you're withholding too much money, the government wants their money earlier. Okay, so less than 50,000, we're gonna wait. You're considered monthly depositor. If you are if you are taking, if you are withholding more than 50, guess what? Uh, in the quarter, we want our money semi-weekly. They, they want their money earlier. And that makes sense. So monthly depositors, they submit their payment through the EFTPS. Well, you could still submit a check, but who wants to do that? On or before the 15th day of the following month. That, that, that's how it works. So what do you submit to the government? Well, you're going to submit to the government, simply put, three things. The Social Security and Medicare tax withheld from the employee. Remember, the employee is one then the employer share as well, plus federal income tax. Whoops, how come the federal income tax is not there? Well, also, okay, federal income taxes. You submit those three things. So ABC company is a depositor, is a monthly depositor for payroll 
paid during the month of April, the company withheld 4000 in income taxes, 2500 in Social Security, and 863 in Medicare. So that's what happened in April. Guess what? The company will have to pay by May 15th these amounts. Remember, they withheld for Social Security 2500 for Medicare 863. They have to take what they took from the employee and they match it. Therefore, they have to send the $4,000, which is the federal tax withheld. They have to send the employee Social Security, EESS, employee Medicare, employer SS portion, and employer Medicare. Simply put, all of this goes to the same place, which is Uncle Sam. Let's look at a semi-weekly schedule. So again, if you if you if 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 you are taken if you are withholding too much money, they want their money earlier. So if your payroll is paid on Wednesday or Thursday or Friday, so if you pay your employees Monday, Thursday, and Friday, this is when you take the money. Deposits must be made by the following Wednesday. To simply put, if you pay them by Friday, you have to pay by Wednesday. If you pay them by Thursday, you have to pay them by Wednesday. If you pay them Wednesday, you have a week to pay Wednesday. Or if you are if you pay your employees Saturday, Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday, notice specific dates, then you have to pay no longer than Friday. That's fine. So just you need to know the dates. And again, what happened is if you work in this industry, you will create a schedule schedule for yourself. You might be dealing with four or five different companies at the same time, or maybe more. You could be you could be responsible. I remember um I was responsible for 10 to 15 companies. Make that, that was part of my duty, basically to make sure I submit when I was starting in a CPA firm to submit their payroll taxes. So you really have to be ha, have a good calendar. I used to use my physical calendar. I used to use, there was no Google calendar back then. I used to use an electronic calendar, but not Google calendar. And I would have all sorts of notes for myself to remember that I need to submit those payments because it's it's critical that you do that on time. Let's assume XYZ company, which pays its employees every Friday. So Friday goes right here. So they have to pay them the f Wednesday, the following Wednesday, in the semi-weekly scheduled deposit. Or when the company paid its employees on Friday, it incurred payroll of 20000 on that date. Guess what? No, la no later. You can pay it earlier, but no later than Wednesday. You have to make that payment. You have to make that payment. Again, I used to have even... When I started, I used to even have my phone. I used to have a flip phone. And you know, you remember the flip phone used to have an alarm alarm clock. So my alarm clock would go off several times throughout the day. And some employees did not like it because, you know, they did not like my alarm going on, but uh, that's fine. We dealt with that. Um, remember the payroll date is the payroll when the payroll is paid, not the, the end of the payroll period. It's when you paid your employee. So if Nicholas Company, the monthly scheduled depositor, and pays its employees on the first date of the month of the payroll ending on the last month of the prior period, well, the payroll is when the payroll paid is the date. So payroll tax withheld on June 1st, okay, June 1st is when we took the money, are due then no later than July 15th, 15th of the following month, even though the payroll was for the week performed during May. So the employee worked in May, it doesn't matter when they work. Is when when did we pay them? We paid them in June, 15 of the following month. You have to make the payment. Okay. In other words, although the payroll period end in May, so you think, well, we need to submit the money by June 15. No, we pay them June 1st, therefore July 15th. If the day on which taxes are due is a weekend or a holiday, taxes are payable the next banking day. So that's that's obvious. Semi-weekly scheduled depositor have at least three banking days to make a deposit. So if a banking day is a holiday, it means the employer does not get three banking days. The payment is extended. That's all what it is. What happens if you're too large or too small? If you're taking too much money or you, you know, you're not uh, you, you're a small company. And I dealt with many small companies. If your payroll tax liability is less than twenty five hundred, you, you can you can pay this money at the end of the quarter. And I had a lot of companies like this, maybe twenty five companies. They paid. They made their payment, one payment at the end of the quarter, 2,500, because it's it's themselves. They were self-employed and they paid themselves a little bit of money, okay? And you don't have to do EFTPS. We would still do EFTPS. You will submit the payment when you fill out your nine form 941, 941 voucher, and you submit the payment. We submitted the payment through EFTPS, but that's beside the point.
okay now what happened if you're too large too large means what you're you have you paid you have payroll taxes one hundred thousand dollar or more so you withheld money from your employees and large corporations do that large corporation they have mil wages in millions and hundreds of of millions sometime so they take a lot of payroll taxes as a result the government's not going to wait a few days or a week or a month they want their money immediately so if it's a large company hundred thousand dollar or more i never dealt with this um they may they they must make the deposit the following day <laughs> the government wants their money okay because that's a lot of money okay whether your monthly or semi-weekly scheduled deposit or once you would once you get to that number you have to pay it the following day Okay. For example, if 100,000 of taxes are accumulated on Monday, you have to deposit that money by Tuesday. Okay. If on Tuesday you would help an additional 90,000, then you have, uh, remember, if it's Tuesday, you can pay it by Friday. You have till Friday to pay it. Um, an employer who's a monthly scheduled depositor and accumulates 100,000 of tax liability on any day becomes a semi-weekly if you were, if you were, if you were monthly but you accumulated this amount you become semi-weekly scheduled depositor on the next day and remain so for at least the rest of the calendar year until they go back and look at the look back period so this is just you know for large large companies now what happened if you don't make your deposits on time there are penalties different type of penalties this is a list of them you just need to know what they are um, in the real world you'll have to deal with them again most companies they outsource their payroll to either payroll company or CPA firm that does this work. Where I work in a, at my CPA firm, we had our own payroll company. One of the partners had his own payroll company. So we handle payroll for our customers as well. So let's take a look at a comprehensive example to see how we can fill out the 941 in Schedule B. So we're dealing with Watson Company. This is their EIN number. This is their um, address. The following payroll for the quarter ended March 31st. This is they have six employees, gross wages of 100, 300,000. They took federal income tax for the quarter 24,000. So uh, wages subject to Social Security 300,000. Wages subject to Medicare 300,000. Now this example is easy. Why? Because they told you they paid them 300,000, and all the wages are subject to Social Security. Now in the real world, what you have to do, and this is. You know, we would have a formula. Basically, some employees remember when if they exceeded the 137, 700. When I was working, it was around 105. Believe it or not, the limit was around 105. But if they exceed 137, 700, if they exceed this amount, even even less than 105, it doesn't matter. So remember, if the if some employees already exceeded 137, well, this is the first quarter, but some employees could exceed. 137 700 some of the wages may not be subject to social security but for the sake of simplicity we're going to assume they are all subject also assume that the company pay wages on semi-monthly basis and fifty thousand per pay period deposits for the quarters were sixty nine thousand eight hundred so made they made deposits remember you have to send your payment make the deposit and this is how we're going to compute the uh, the deposits they pay uh, they have fifty thousand dollar in wages per period times 12.4 remember 12.4 is for both employee and employer each pay 6.2 social security 6200 medicare 50,000 times 2.9 1.45 1.45 1450 we're going to assume that the federal income tax is 4000 per pay period so total tax tax liability per period so every time they pay the employees they have a tax liability of 11650 Total tax liability for the quarter was 69600 They deposited only 69800 They are short $100. Let's take a look at this information. How would it be filled on a form? Again, this is a simple example, but it will it's a starting point. This is how you get start to get familiar with the forms. And believe it or not, I like payroll taxes. Payroll taxes were clean, not like individual taxes. Payroll taxes, they repeat. It's basically the same numbers individual taxes are a little bit more complicated because they change from year to year okay let's take a look at the form number of employees six wages were three hundred thousand wages and other compensation federal income tax withheld 27 then we now now we have to look at taxable social security wages again for this example we assume it's the same it doesn't have to be the same but we assume it's the same so of all the three hundred thousand it's all subject to social security and all of it subject to medicare that's always the case this number would always equal to this number 
because you know wages are subject to Medicare, and if there's and we're not gonna get involved with the 0.9 percent additional tax. If any employee earned more than that, more than 200,000 or 250 merit filing jointly, there's an additional 0.9. We talked about this in the prior session. Okay, it doesn't matter now. Add column two from five B, C, D, and you know, all of them. So 37 plus 37, 200 plus 87, that's 45, 900, which is, you know, FICA taxes. Uh, total taxes before adjustments, we're not going to have adjustments. We're going to take the 24, the federal income tax plus the FICA, which is 69,600. This is, again, this is quarterly federal tax return. It doesn't mean you pay the quarterly. Okay, remember, you pay depending on your pay schedule. You could be paying, it could be a monthly depositor or a semi weekly depositor but at the end of the quarter 941 you have to complete a 941 for the quarter this is basically a reporting form a reporting form and if you are short you will pay which is remember we are short in this example so the company paid the company is responsible for 69,900 but they only paid 69,800 they are short for a hundred dollar okay so this is basically again a reporting form Page two, you don't have to worry about it. You can take a look at it. Schedule B form 941, you show the payment they pay on the 15th of every month and the total liability was 11,650 at the 15th of every month, 11,650. Remember here, 11,650. And what they did, they took it and they times times six. This is how they determined this. Somehow we were short $100, not a big deal. We're going to send the payment or we can go to the EFTPS and send the $100 difference and close the quarter. Okay. Again, at the end of this recording, I invite you strongly to visit my website, farhatlectures.com, if you are a CPA candidate or if you are looking to improve your career and get those extra 30 credit for your CPA. Good luck, study hard, and stay safe.